good start for us. Um, we didn't play our best, but I don't expect us to play our best this early in the season. A number one versus a number three challenge in the third game of the season is something that is a little new for us. We haven't had that in a while. Um, it definitely had the feeling because of the crowd interaction, had the feeling of a championship style game. But I think both teams would tell you that they weren't ready to play championship style softball at that time. So we learned a lot from the weekend. There were some things we got to really adjust and work a little harder with, kind of clear out some headspace and get back to just a regular grind that um, making softball look a little bit easier, making hitting look a little easier than what we did. We'll get started with Ryan Aber. Yeah, Patty, good talking to you again. Wanted to ask you about uh, Jordy, and I know we ask you a lot about her going into the season, but you know now that she's uh, performed, uh, you know we've seen her on the field, and and she's had success there. You know what what did you think about her opening weekend, especially the way that she handled uh, that that game against UCLA? You know I thought she'd have a little bit of nerves. That was a big game obviously, for a freshman to take on. It, I didn't feel like she was phased. I never saw any nervousness. I never saw any intimidation. I saw a pitcher who was in complete control at all times. Uh, fired up, had some tough counts, got herself out of it. I thought she was outstanding. And I don't think I've ever seen a freshman, at least in our program, have that kind of poise and that kind of stuff to shut down a very elite and very good UCLA hitting team. And I want to ask you something in a, a different direction. Obviously, a lot of talk about Jocelyn and that record and everything. Um, I think we're hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to Lauren Chamberlain next week. I wanted to ask you about her as you look back on her career, her importance in the program, and uh, the, the way that, uh, you know, how much she's been around since then, you know, what, what to you is maybe stands out the most when you think about uh, Lauren Chamberlain, um, the, the person and the player? I think Lauren and Jossie are, are taking similar roads. Um, they came in and kind of took the world by storm, and then they had some bumps along the way. And then Lauren, her junior and senior year just completely took off and became a very mature hitter. What I liked about Lauren Chamberlain is she could have struck out four times or hit four home runs and you wouldn't know the difference. You wouldn't know whether she did one or the other. She was very calm, uh, not real boastful just very prepared, very in tune, um, definitely one of the most dominant hitters I've ever seen. And Jossie kind of follows right in her footsteps. I really feel that they're taking very similar roads in that way. Hey, I really appreciate it, Patty. Uh, sure. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Go to Eric Bailey. Patty, it's good to see you again. Um, I wanted to ask you about Jordy. There, there were some illegal pitches this weekend. When, when you're trying to create an illegal pitch, how do you fix the physical part without getting too involved with the mental side of things and having the pitcher think too much about what they're trying to correct? I, I, we aren't really trying to do anything technical with her in game. So. If that is what is going to be called, we're going to own it and we're going to go on. And that's exactly what she did. She has pitched a, um, a career in where she's had a style that develops power, creates power. And sometimes she'll take a little bit of a hop to get there. And then as soon as something is called, she adjusts and goes right back to it. So if anything, what's interesting about Jory is if you want to call an illegal pitch on her, she um, she almost 
takes it as like, give me the ball back and let me show you. <laughs> so that's kind of what I felt against UCLA that didn't, it was almost a motivator to her in a weird way. But um, she's going to have to make some adjustments as we go, and she already has. So in game, we're not sitting in a corner discussing what she needs to do because it's too late by then. We just yeah. continue on. I want to switch gears and ask you about Riley Boone, a player who seems to be impatient and really worked her way into the lineup. What are your thoughts on a player just understanding this sometimes can be a process, especially when the transfer portal is getting so big in, in college athletics? Yeah, I really appreciate her patience, um, but I know that she knows that she um, needed to get a little bit better and have a little more confidence. And then as she was gaining that, she had an injury that set her back. So she's been kind of going through her own bumpy road as well. But she is finally uh, 100% physically, and it's showing. She's laying down bunts. She's having some timely hits. She's so good on defense. Uh, what I really appreciated this weekend was our 7 8 9 I th thought they did a great job of trying to turn the lineup over from Tan and six, seven, eight, Tan and Snow and Donahue and Boone. Those guys down there were really doing a good job for us. Um, and Boone is a big part of that. She, she's got three dimensions to her game. Like she can easily has the power to hit it over the fence. She chop it, beat it out, bun it, beat it out. She can slap it. She can do a lot of things, which makes her very dangerous in the bottom of the lineup. And she's a tough out. Patty, thanks so much. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll go to Joey Elmer. Yeah, Patty, uh, I think just in terms of the results, it was kind of what a lot of us um, kind of expected. But uh, what did you learn from your team maybe that um, you – hadn't been able to see just in kind of some of the inner squads and things. And, and also from that big UCLA game, what were you able to kind of find out about your team? Well, overall, I felt a few were, are, um, might be looking in the rearview mirror is what they did and trying to build on or better what they did last year. I'm not quite sure. Um, for some of them, it felt like they made the strike zone really large. And we usually have the ability to take away pitches and really pick a side and kind of have a much more precise game plan than what I was seeing some of our bigger hitters uh, approaching at the plate. From a team, I saw um, perseverance, a UCLA game. Um, we just tried to make things happen. We weren't hitting them all over the place. We were just trying to manufacture runs the best we could by getting balls through the middle of the field. Or It wasn't a big home run weekend for us. Um, we knew we needed to manufacture runs however we could, and they did a good job of finding their way on base. But um, there were too many times this weekend with an offense that we have where we have one, two, three innings like one, two, three, inning over, eight pitches thrown by the opponent. That's not us. And so we talked a lot about um, working counts better, making better selections, like we're letting a pitcher off too easy. We did that this weekend. So those are things that we learned that we definitely know we can do better at and putting more pressure as an offense on the pitching staff and the defense. Go to Abby Bitterman. Yeah, Patty, before um, the UCLA game, I heard you in your pregame interview on um, Chris Plank's show talking about how UCLA always comes onto the field with this mentality that, you know, they're the best team on the field and that they're going to win and how that's kind of something that you've wanted for this program and that this year with this team, that's something you're seeing. And obviously winning the national championship helps, but I was just wondering where or, or what kind of you've seen about this team that um, has kind of shown you that they have that kind of confidence and mentality this year. And if any of, and separately, if any of that comes from the confidence that Jordy has shown in the circle so far. 
Yeah, I, it's interesting. I did not say, okay, this is who we're going to, I'm like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the underdog? Because we can keep going there. You do very well. Our program's done very well in that role. Or you can say, we're the king of the mountain here. Come get us. And they said, it's time that we accept that role and let's see what we look like that way. So that's what they wanted and that's what they chose. And it's a tough place to live, I think they're finding, um, which is good. We need to learn that. We need to figure out how we maintain that um, championship mindset. Shouldn't change just because you're saying bring it instead of we're coming to get you. It's like, you want some of this? Come on. So it was interesting to see that. Jordy's, um, a, not just Jordy, and I know everyone's talking about Jordy, and I get that, because uh, it's very fun to watch. It's very animated. It's very, you know, like you're just very in tune with what she's doing and very um, competitive. But all of our pitchers set the tone. Our pitchers set the tone for everything else that was going on uh, on the field. And we are not used to that in the past. It was a scoring runs early and scoring a lot and pitchers just do your thing. Hold on, get, let's get us some outs. You know, we, we don't need shutouts. Um, the pitching staff is definitely this last weekend. They led the way for the rest of everything that we did. And that's kind of a welcome feeling on my side. Um, but I think you're going to start to see things start to balance out a little bit more as we go forward. Thanks, Patty. Sure. We'll go to James Hale. Hey, Patty, good luck this weekend. Um, Patty, you've been magical with your leadoff hitter. And uh, you were the first that I know of that put a great power hitter at the top of the lineup. We've talked about it a lot from little Manny to, you know, to where we're at now. And you got, Jennings, who's got an incredible ratio with home runs to games played so far. But, you know, she's, again, off to a great start. Homer's in her first at-bat. Talk about the, that importance, again, of having her. She can run a little bit, too, maybe better than some of the others that you tried there. And uh, talk about, you know, her impact she can have in every single game for you. Yeah, her size alone makes you go, oh, as soon as she walks up, you feel that. Um, her swing, she doesn't chase things. Like she really sets a good tone for the start of the game. She rarely, rarely does she strike out. So uh, that is one thing about her is that you always feel like she's going to find her way on. She does run a lot better this year than she did last year. Or maybe I just didn't run her a lot last year because Jossie was in the two hole. But uh, I like to put kind of that run and hit on so that if Jossie takes a pitch, we should still be able to steal and get to second. But I also am doing that to see if I could get Jossie to uh, swing without thinking and just try to hit the ball hard at times. So uh, it works out well. And she is definitely, you know, I could easily lead off with Jada Coleman. She has all the skills to be a great lead off. But I just think Tiare sends a different message with her power and her size. And she has been fantastic there. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change it. Uh, also, one final uh, other question about the illegal pitch. Did you guys get an edict or did you hear from the NCAA or did they call you or anything and say, hey, we're going to, I know they did a couple of years ago. And then they, we didn't hear about it much. And maybe in the tournament it came up. Did you get a new one this year? No, I mean, we, we didn't get any, I mean, it's just something that you've got to deal with and she's got okay. better with it. So it wasn't anyone saying, hey, all points bulletin out on Jordy Ball. I, I don't think that would be fair to do if they did something like that. Um, but regardless, it, <laughs> like I said, it, it might delay the game. It might take away a pitch, but she's a different, she's a different athlete where it almost inspires her more to uh, show you that, okay, oh, wow, you caught me. Okay. And then she just adjusts and away we go. So it didn't really affect her whatsoever. I didn't feel any sense of, okay, I need to go out and talk with her. I need to calm her down. 
if anything, I'm going, you know, I, I see assistant coaches kind of barking at umpires and I'm sometimes feeling like they're getting talked into things, but never did I ever have a sense of, I got to pull Jordy out or this isn't working. I never felt that one at one, any, at any time during that game. I just watched a few games. I didn't see it called anywhere else. So I didn't know if they were just trying to make it a more emphasis or not. Good luck in Houston coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Go to Joe Bettner. Hey, Patty. Um, you talked a little bit about just with obviously Jocelyn and what she's doing and kind of the, uh, the attention on her. And I know she's kind of dealt with kind of that attention since she started um, at Oklahoma, just hitting 30 home runs in a freshman season is going to draw a lot of attention. But how have you seen her, I guess, mature mentally? Not, not so much as a player, but just as a person from that time to where she is right now. Yeah, I, um, I've seen her grow up. I've seen her calm down. She was always very opinionated, very talkative. Um, I guess I could almost say kind of uh, disruptive at practice sometimes. And when she was younger, she had a lot to say. She still has a lot to say, but she says it now at the right time. <laughs> Like when it fits, um, she's a really smart hitter. She has a lot of good things to share when we're looking at video and we're talking about our opponents. Um, so I've really seen her mature as a, as a young woman. Uh, I think she could tell you she came here as a girl. I think she could tell you that she definitely has stepped into womanhood. There are times when every player here who is a woman can backtrack a little bit. And there have been times um, where each one of them have done that. But ultimately, she has reached that place where uh, I'm very comfortable with who she is. She is very comfortable with who she is. Um, and she doesn't allow, like, if she's not hitting the way she wants, she doesn't normally allow it to infiltrate her mind and affect her approach. Uh, but I can tell you that I've dealt with a home run race for an NCAA record where two players were chasing the record in the same season on the same team, which was not pleasant whatsoever. The good news for Jossie is that she needs to hit six home runs and we probably have about 65 games left to play. So if that can't take the pressure off her, <laughs> then we may not reach that record. But I am very confident that um, this is going to settle down a little bit, um, the hype and she'll stop looking and she's not paying attention that she can just get herself locked in once we get there, I think you'll see her take off. But I saw the same thing happen with Lauren. And it's the, uh, I guess, the anxiety of getting it over with. Let's just get it over with so I can move on. And that's where she might be right now. And um, at least we're not 20 away, because that would be a mega problem. So I think we're in a good place, and uh, she'll be just fine. Thanks so much, Coach. Yeah. Go to Eric Lopez. Coach, obviously you're going to Houston, a really strong field. McNeese State's an NCAA tournament team. Texas State, Coach Woodard's got a great team with Jessica Mullins as their pitcher. And, of course, you get to see Coach Vess and uh, Houston. Just talk about going down there and facing that competition and what you want to see your team improve on from the first week. Yeah, I, I love the competition. I love that allowing us to come I mean it is so convenient it's good competition it's good weather it's easy to get to we can get home at a decent hour on Sunday I mean everything about it makes sense um, we can take a bus down with our bags some are flying some like our support staffs on the bus the rest of us are flying so we're able to save some money things like that it makes a lot of sense besides that the competition is great and if you look at where we were last year, uh, we were not playing great competition. So you could, you would expect that our hitters would do what they're doing. So this is quite different. They're facing better pitching. They're facing better hitters. We're facing looks different than what we did 
early this time last season. So I would expect that our team has got a little more um, grounded approach towards what we're doing, where they really want to walk out of the weekend. And I'm not even talking about wins and losses. It's just about being better. It's about playing better as a team. It's about giving up your own at bat if it's, you know, a three, one count and three, two is a ball, but you swing at something out of the zone. We're not going to do that anymore because if you get yourself on base, someone's going to drive you in. So it's having a team approach, a team approach to hitting a team approach to everything that we're doing. I felt a little disconnect in that. So um, it is sharpening our game, sharpening our approach. It's creating more of that championship type team um, again we're not quite ready to be called that you can call us number one you can call us number nine we don't care right now we just want to continue to get better and work on the things that just aren't what we expected from last week we want to work to continue to fix those things how have you seen coach uh, vest change as a player that you coached was one of the great players in your program history to now a coach, a successful coach, leading Houston to the NCAA tournament. How have you seen her evolve over the years? Yeah, she was a hardcore competitor, and I used to push her, um, and she used to push me back a little bit, so we had a little bit of that going on. Um, it's funny, though. She was one of the best outfielders, one of the best players we've had here um, in our history, and to see her go out and coach, um, she was tough. She was very, she's very hardcore and hard, works them hard and very organized. What I love about her, she'd always reach back and want to learn. And she'd ask me questions. She talked to JT about hitting. She's not the coach that thinks she knows everything. She's the coach that wants to know everything. So she is researching and asking questions and she's, doing everything right to become a great coach. And I really appreciate that about her. Uh, I love her style on the field. I see how she works. Um, personally, it just makes me very proud. That's, those are those really, I get why I love this is because I get to watch our former players coach. And I just love, I love watching them. I love seeing that they do some of the things that we do still. Um, I'm really proud of that. And um, I don't know, I think she's done a great job of, of really building and, and uh, cementing that Houston program. She joked with me that uh, she's got you on speed dial. She's going to be picking your brain about going to the Big 12. It's her program. It's going to the Big 12 and ask for advice. <laughs> what's the, what's, especially when it comes to going to a place to eat, what's some of the advice you might give her when to go to the Big 12? I don't know if I'm still in the big 12, I'll give her some advice, but I don't know where <laughs> we're going to be by then. So um, that I'll tell you, I'll Sam Ricketts, Michelle Gascoigne, Kristen Vesely, any of those guys know that whatever they need, they're always going to get from me. So whether I'm in the big 12 or not, I will always be her biggest fan and help her any way I can. Thanks coach. We'll go last one for coach Jason Patacchio. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, thanks. You're welcome. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to ask two questions. Um, the first one, I'm kind of intrigued on the if you had any conversations with um, Jordy Ball um, prior to the UCLA game. Um, did you kind of walk her through um, how big of a game this was or, or kind of did you uh, talk to her about it through the weekend or did she kind of know the implications prior to the game? Uh, we didn't talk much because I didn't feel there were big implications, to be honest. It's just the third game of our season. So for Jordy, I think less is more. She's gone over the scan report. She works with Jen Rocha, looks at the, the batting order, kind of create a plan for each hitter. So she's prepared. It's like studying for a test. You, you'd study each hitter what their strengths and weaknesses are, how we're going to go about exposing those. And that's now you go out and you take the test. So there's nothing. I said nothing. I kind of maybe winked at her 
the kind of flat hands, that was about it. Um, I don't want to put unnecessary pressure on her. And, and again, the implications were what I wanted out of the first weekend was what do we look like and what do we need to do to get better? And if that means that we took a loss, it's because we're not good enough and we own that. So we got out of it. Um, and I think good teams cannot play great games and still find ways to win. And that's a sign of a good team. So that is the good news for us. That's what I felt. Um, now it's about refining. And um, again, Jordy, Jordy is just a competitor that doesn't need to be motivated. She's, she was born motivated. She came out of the womb motivated for something. So I, she's, she's special. She's definitely a special, special athlete. Yeah. Um, the second question I have for you, um, I, kind of paying attention to your pitching rotations. Um, you didn't, I think you had Nicole May relief. Uh, I think it was in the third game, um, but most of the pitchers played all innings. Um, what's kind of the strategy behind that? And are you going to be switching that up um, going into the Houston uh, tournament? Yeah, it's, there's no, not, we're very unlike baseball. There's not a natural rotation. It is more about matchups. So, I mean, Jordy Ball could throw three straight days in a row if we wanted it to, but I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense for us. Uh, it's who's, where are the holes in our opponent's lineup and what pitcher can best hit those? That is really how it works. If um, let's say Jordy's gonna start and Nicole May is the next best option, she would be that reliever. I mean, we, kind of strategize it out. Sometimes we want to see three or four different pitchers in a game just to give them a bite of it each, you know, something like that. So it's always different. I don't think you could ever really predict what we're going to do. Um, and that's unintentionally intentional. All right. Thank you. I don't even know if that makes sense, but. <laughs> Made a little bit of sense. I got it. Thanks a bunch, Coach. We appreciate All right. it. Thank you, guys.